We just finished our day five practice, and each day it's all about just getting better. And uh, just fundamentals, the technique, and the football team is, what we need to do is just establish an identity. And we know that there's only nine seniors, but still the leadership is still there because we still have guys that have played enough. We're still a young football team, but there's enough guys that have played that you, you feel comfortable, or even if it's a young, you know, if it's a junior or senior who can step up and be a leader, that's, that's what we're looking for. And I just noticed, just looking uh, at the way our guys have worked, they, they've responded well so far, but you know, we're five days into it, we still have a, a number of practices left to go, and we just continue just to watch how we develop as a football team and come together as a football team. Because once you develop the leadership, then you start developing a team, and then the team, the leaders can inspire, they can direct, and they can pull together a group of men and you can just get them all just headed in the right direction, which we haven't been able to do in the past two years. And hoping we can get that accomplished through preseason camp and then hoping that it carries on in the fall camp. But just like the what, uh, just excited about how, how well our guys are, are working so far. You know, just looking at the quarterback position, Teddy is just continuing to just get better each and every day, continue to make the throws, and it's very comfortable in the offense right now. Uh, Coach Watson has done a great job, where Teddy now has become a student of the game, where he really understands and he commands the offense. Will Stein is still doing a great job also. Even And I told Will the other day is that you still, I would still want you to push him. Don't, don't take a back seat because at some point we're going to need you. And then a the running back position, you've got five running backs that are just, just each one of them have a different quality, but you look at uh, Dominique Brown, you look at Sonoris Perry, you look at Jeremy Wright, you look at Corbin Lamb, and then the young kid. Uh, so we with Radcliffe, we have enough guys there that uh, you know, Dominique is big and powerful. Jeremy's a guy that can make you miss. Uh, Corbin Lamb is, is built with low to the ground, just like Radcliffe, where they can run and they can just power runners where they can run through guys. But you have five running backs and I've been very well pleased with our wide receiver play. You know, taking gains, the gains of the defensive back, uh, taking gains and moving him to wide receiver has just really it just added enthusiasm in that group. And, and Gaze is an outstanding player, but just uh, just the way he goes in each day he's out there and he's talking and he's and, and he's not talking to the defensive backs, but he's talking to his, his own group of guys, encouraging them, saying, let's go, guys. And now Andrea has stepped it out. Devontae Parker is just showing a lot for us right now. Copeland, Jared Davis, all, all the guys that we need to step, into, step up at that position now are coming in their own, and they're coming into a really good group. And, and you, when you have a quarterback who can throw you the football, then you do have some wide receivers who want to work because they want the ball in their hands. But it's only one football, and I tell them all the time and everybody, you can't have the ball every play, so you'll get your numbers, and Coach Watson is doing a good job of spreading that ball around. The tight end position uh, with, with Nord and Hubble and uh, Chris White uh, coming along then, uh, with our freshman, uh, Hunter. But the thing about that position is that we, we just get, we got to get a support tight end where we, because we know this, we're going to play some tight ends, and, and we need a fourth tight end because we want to run our football. In our offensive line, we look at Javon Brown, you look at Jake Smith, you look at Mario, you uh, go, go to the other side, we, we come outside and with John Miller, you know, you got five, five guys that started at some point during the uh, last season. You know, Cumber being a veteran there, and then we'll get Mario back, he's been healthy. It's the first camp that he's been through where he's been healthy, where he's practicing. You know, last year this time, we did not see him. I haven't been, even since I took the job, I didn't get a, haven't had a chance to really see the Mario that we've been looking for. But now he's coming into his own where he's becoming that guy for us. And on the offensive line, and they would you think it would Mike has got to develop and help us, helps got to develop and help us. Romano, uh, Jordan has got to develop and help us. But we get, we have to develop those guys behind it because we know as we have, we have five solid. You need anywhere from eight to nine to be really good on the offensive line because you may have some injuries. So we need to really develop the, uh, that young group of guys and bring them along. And defensively. I was telling Coach Hurt the other day, we're, we're just athletic in that position now. And just looking at, at the, what we have inside now with Brandon Dunn, with Roy Phylon, with a uh, big man. <laughs> he's, he's so big. 
Louis May because of Jermaine Brooks. But, but you have three big guys in there, and now with Sheldon Rankins being a young guy and D'Angelo Brown being two young guys that are coming along to help give us some added depth inside that we need because you've got to be good down the middle. You know, when you look at your football team, you have to be good down the middle. I always say it starts with the center, the quarterback, the nose guard, the middle linebacker goes to the free safety. You have to be good down the middle. If you're good down the middle, then you're going to have a chance to win a, a lot of football games. And then you look at the outside of B.J. DeBose, B.J. Butler, Maul and Mount, you know, just, uh, you have a, a group of guys there that, that are guys that are just coming on, uh, Marcus Smith, guys that are coming on at that position that are just athletic and you're just athletic enough where you can go rush the pass and you can put pressure on where we don't have to uh, blitz every time. I told Vance, maybe this may be the group, but we're still young, we're still developing, but maybe be a group of guys that we can go rush for and hope that we can get some pressure on the quarterback with those four guys. Then at the linebacker position, uh, Preston Brown, uh, you look at him, he's big, he's 250 pounds. And I always tell Preston, he's got to be the leader because you, you want the guy in the middle to be the leader, especially on defense because he's a guy that's going to make the calls, he's a guy that's going to make the checks, he's a guy that does all the talking. So we got to look to him for leadership. And then Keith Brown's a young guy, Burgess is young, Daniel Brown, Durant. But you, you have guys that, they're two young guys, they're coming on where they're doing a good job of pushing, where they've learned and they understand. The good thing about them was get here in January, so when they got here in January, they were able to learn the defense. And now you look in the secondary, you know, you got the guys back. You got Bruce Shell and Drew Johnson back. You have Tryon and Keith Smith. So you have those guys back in the back end. You have all four starters back. So you, you're, you're just saying that each day they're getting better. Where the competition is good with our wide receivers and defensive backs. It's really good because they're going against a good group of wide receivers that can put pressure on them. The ball can get up and go get the ball from them. They're fast enough where they can run by them. But it, it is. It's, um, you know, we still have a lot of days left. We still have a long, 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 long ways to go. We're nowhere near where we should be, and we gotta continue to get better and better each and every day. And that's gotta happen just to watch this football team, because it's still gotta come down to accountability. When guys just get lined up, let's get our feet in the ground. Let's get lined up. Listen to a call, and just do what you're coached to do. That's, that's all I ask them to do. And a lot of times I say. Reason why, why did you do it? I know your coach didn't tell you to do that, so we shouldn't be making those mistakes. Even though we're young, you feel like enough guys have played where you can not say you're a veteran team, but you're still growing, maturing, and, and developing, and hoping that you can become a, a veteran team at some point, hoping that's before the first game. But like I said, look, we just had to continue to work, and, and just like the, just the attitude of this football team and the way they're working, and how hard they're working and their understanding. Charlie, if you're able to play with just uh, four rushing the quarterback, what difference does that make in your larger scheme defensively? Well, what it is is you don't have to bring all the pressure from uh, when you have to blitz. And a lot of times when you blitz and there's some certain people, you may have to drop a defensive end. Now let's just let that defensive end drop and let the people who always drop drop where the linebackers are the cover guys, secondary where that back seven are the cover guys, and let that front score go. Coach, if you had your brothers, would you use all five running backs, or would you rather narrow the ones who play mostly two, two or three? I like to narrow it down, and, and at some point we're going to. And, and if you look at it, you think about last season, all those guys are back. So you figure that at some point somebody's going to step up and say, hey, it's my job, and, and this is what I I, as I like for that to happen. I like for one of those guys to all of a sudden just step up and become that guy, become an every down back post. I've been a lot said and written about already about expectations of the work. Have you seen you know, how are they handling that so far? Well, what I try to do is, is, is the expectations are out there. There's no way we can hide from it now. And, and everyone, you've been picked to win the conference. And, but the, the, the key thing for, uh, for our football team is just continue to work. Just don't get caught up in the noise in the system because like I say, I always go back to two years ago. We were picked last. Last year, we were picked seventh. So now, all of a sudden, how do you go from last to seventh to first in three years? And we have and with nine seniors. So you have to continue to work, and, and you have to continue to understand. And it's all about you developing as a as a player, and even even as a person. But it's, you have to develop as a player. And if we get that done, then the expectations, you'll be able to handle it. Because the preparation is going to be there. Because we're going to get them prepared to go play. Now it's all about us. Can we just handle it? Are you confident that will happen? You can 
Well, if you, you're hoping that they just would go out and just play it and just play within themselves. But if you think, and you know, I hate to look back and, and think back about what has happened in the past, but you know, you go beat a good West Virginia team and you come home and you, you lose to uh, Pittsburgh. You go beat Kentucky and you come home and you lose to uh, Marshall. So it's, it's, it's all about can, can we continuously just be a consistent winner? And that's what we have not built in the program where we've been consistent week in and week out where we wouldn't want. Now, we wouldn't want it what last five out of six games but still, that we have to be consistent. Where each week, and and you have to understand this: that nothing is ever for granted. Don't take anything for granted. Just make sure you work, and then your your work will pay off. It's all about just going to work each and every day. What was behind the decision to move Charles Dean back? Well, when when you look at it, said that at, at defensive back, you know, you have four starters coming back, and I was just trying to find a place for him. When we were recruiting him, we were recruiting him as a wide receiver. So I, and I was, uh, I was saying to our wide receiver to uh, watch the offense. I said we just we need to get us a guy over here that just has some energy to him and somebody who's going to get that group of guys going. And that's what uh, Gaines have been able to do. But he's a really good player also. And, uh, what, what's the time That's hard to say right now. He's working. Uh, he goes through whenever we throw 707. He goes in. And even when we go a team against one another, not I'm sorry, when they go a team against scouts, not when they go against the defense, he is in there. But uh, his return is he's getting better each and every day. So the timetable for him, but we're hoping that he'll be ready for the first game. Right. Right. And that's why another reason with games, you feel like you got a guy who can run very well, and you can throw the ball up. But, but even now, with that group of receivers, uh, Devontae Parker is, is be, he's a better player than he was a year ago now. Uh, Andrew Smith is a better player now than he was a year ago. But just the way they're working right now, and you can just see the confidence factor within that group. But when you add another player, and that's to any position, you add a good player to a, a, any position, then everybody else, if he can make everyone else around him better, which games have done, then you feel very comfortable about their position. That's why we feel so strong. And I'm just looking for the days that we've had in camp, the way that position has worked, it's been just unbelievable. You know, I, I just really hadn't even thought about it, but I, you know, just the other night sitting in a team meeting, looking across there, and it's for those nine guys, but um, just, you, you would think because of the way we played our freshman last season when you end up playing like 12 of them, and now the juniors, a lot of a ton of them are played. So uh, just the senior leadership, you, you're looking around the room and there's, there's not many in many positions. So you're hoping that the guys that have played, that they've played enough where they continue to grow, just that they mature and they grow up and, and now the leadership can come not only from a senior, but from someone else. I can remember when I was at University of Florida and we'd go in, uh, I can remember when Tebow and Spikes and Percy Harvin, that group came in, they were freshmen. And then we won, won a national championship with that group of guys, but all those guys played. And then when, when Chris Lee was a senior then, so then their junior year, that group of guys are juniors, they wouldn't want a national championship. So it's, it's, it's about just guys just believing in their ability. And the guys feel, you know, you get enough guys around you where you lead them the right way by, by the way you work, not by the way you talk, but by the way you work. No, right now they're working with the defensive front, and so we, we have packages where four down packages are in, three down packages, because they're, they're very athletic, and they can run. They, those guys are really ranging, and they can run, and they can cover if we need them to cover, but we're, we're playing them uh, with the defensive front. Can you talk a little bit about the freshmen? Who you expect to have a breakout year for the season? Well, right now with that freshman group, uh, we, we just, we have a, a number of upperclassmen where we're working them right now. So a lot of freshmen, they're not getting, they're not getting many reps right now because you just don't need them right now.
but uh, they're going to be good players at, at when, they're, when their time is uh, when it's time for them to come and play. But right, it's, it's all about them learning. Everything's so quick for them. You know, their head is swimming. I was just talking to Sheldon Rankin. He said, "God, coach, I never learned so much so quickly." And he, I said, "What's well, wrong?" He said, "I'm in my playbook every night, and I still don't understand some of this stuff." But it, it, it's what it is because of how fast we're going because we feel like we have a veteran team of freshmen. It's not they're playing catch up, but we, we just don't need them. So we're, we're kind of just taking them and each day just, each, each and every day just walk, kind of just walking them through and making sure that they learn it all. After two years of using a lot of freshmen, is it comforting at all that you don't have to use those guys this year? Well, you know, I always tell it, guys, if, if I'm upper class, I only where a freshman play because I didn't work. And, and it's, not, it's not like the, the freshman, the deal, he came in and worked and took your position. But it is the upper class, when they've been in the system, they understand the system. So they should know what to do. And that freshman, he come in, he has no idea. You know, like, but uh, it's easier for a skilled guy when they're a freshman to play for the wide receivers and DBs. But right now, we've got defensive backs. It's Bernard and I mean, Cornell and Jared Hall. Holloman, so they're no two, but they, we don't have wide receiver as no freshman, so it's, but they, that's usually where you can find them the point just to get them on the field. Have you named the face of the program this year? No, I haven't. Uh, it's just, the way the program's going right now, it's it's just going to be a total team effort where we're just trying to just push that team and, and, and get our team going. Do you think you needed one the first two years? Is that why you kind of did that? Or? Well, I, I just thought that it, uh, my first year, uh, Malai Powell was a, a young man that I, I just wanted to give him some confidence, and he had all the ability. So, if you put it on him now, all of a sudden you give him that title. Now maybe he'll step up, in which he did. He stepped up, and then Vic, that's all he ever wanted to be was a face of the curve. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, what's the schedule? You got a lot of short turnarounds. How, how do you? Yeah, I've looked at the schedule, but it, you're right. We play Kentucky on a Sunday, then we bounce back and play uh, Missouri State that Saturday. Then we go play uh, South Florida, and then we bounce back and play Cincinnati. Then we got UConn at home, then we go on the road to Rutgers. But it's we have to play. And, and what's but what's really good with that schedule is that they don't get a no one gets a week off. So we're playing at Saturday, then the opponent that we're playing is also playing at, uh, the short week, just like we are. So if no one's getting a, a, a open weekend, and now if someone had an open week, I say it'd be to their advantage, but no one's getting an open week, so we just have to bounce back and get ready to go play. What Not is your reaction? Guys, what is your reaction uh, to UL fans buying up the extra UK tickets in just 19 minutes? Well, it just shows our support, and the, the, the fan support here has just been tremendous. And, and when you, whenever and whenever you have the fan support that we have then the players start believing in themselves because now they know that someone outside of the program really believe in them. And so when that happens, then the whole attitude changes. That's why the attitude has changed because the players realize there's a lot of people wanting to come and watch you play. There's a lot of support out there. And everyone is excited about what you're doing right now. The whole program, the excitement is in the program. But we can edit. But just because of the great fans that we have. When you took the job, that you has the balance that you need like this time last year, maybe the defense was farther ahead than the offense because the offense was just a lot more inexperienced. But now you feel like it's, it's about the same on both sides. You don't have to rely on. Well, you like to have balance, man. You would like, like to have it on three phases of the game because if you look at offensively, uh, a year ago at this time, we just didn't know we could put the quarterback situation, how it was going to be. So now you got a, a starter that's coming back into quarterback position. And then you were so young. The offensive line will look wise a year ago we had what nine seniors so we were replacing every one of them Mario because Cup didn't start so and they've been on defense when we were just so young and uh, you know losing Dexter is, is going to hurt us but you just, you do you feel like you have a balance there because you, you have enough guys that have played when you took the job and imagined what it would be year three in the program does it resemble anything that you thought to yourself getting set for the third year of the program no, because you, you just don't know, and uh, do it. but it just, the, the credit has to be given our coaches, because our coaches do, do a great job of coaching, and just getting our guys prepared to play, and, and just getting the right guys in the program, and guys, it, you have to get them to really believe in themselves, and, and that's the main, the key thing for us in dealing with our players is make sure that they believe, have that confidence, because a lot of times when you're down, 
it's hard to you pull that confidence up because you've just been told so much what you can do. So now all of a sudden you've been picked to go win the conference, guys, and I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. So we that's who we are right now. So people that's what people think of you. So if someone think that high of you, then let's go show them, let's go work like we want to get to that level. And Charlie, are you, are you seeing a change in their attitude or their mentality now that they have those expectations? Well, because of the expectation in, the, in social media, I mean, the guys read everything and they text everything, and players are involved also. But it, it's now that you, you see it happening to them, they, they, have, they think about that themselves and they even talk about it because you can just hear the conversations when you walk by. You spoke in the past about uh, players carrying themselves like champions. What does that look like? Well, what does it look like? It's just the, the confidence and, and just your whole attitude and just what you think about yourself. And, and I told him this, this again, your attitude will change in the class. Once it changes in the classroom, it will change on the football field. So how you walk on campus, when you walk in a classroom, you take your hat off, you sit down, and, and you, you be respectful to whoever's talking to you, professor or whoever. So when that changes there, then it will change everyone. I, I, don't need, I don't need a guy to walk around, you know, think, being someone that he's not. Just go be yourself. And when you be yourself, and then you start carrying yourself, man, everything about you will change. And so once it changes on campus, then it's going to change within the facility. And then they will start carrying themselves. And, and, uh, and you look at our guys, you know, I was just telling St Stein, Cupper, and Noah right now, Gary, going to the NBA program here. So there's three seniors right now in our program where guys, those young guys in the back row as freshmen, can look up front and just say, oh, those guys have already graduated. I think within not with nine of our, our seniors, I want to say six of them may have already graduated, which is really big. And so now guys are saying, if I just go to class and just do the right thing, then good things are going to happen to me. And now I can feel good about myself. Is that culture change? I know you want results even better than you did, but is the culture change the way you'd like to change it that amount of time? Are you seeing that? Well, what I like to see is every kid, I, I like to see every young man in our program graduate. And I told him, and I said, and I said, listen, when you get to this front row, you're going to have a degree. Or if you don't have a degree, come December, you're going to have a degree. Or you have no reason to be in this program. That, that's going to happen. And so I said, we're not going to fail you. We're, as a coaching staff, we will not fail you there. Now, on the football field, but I said, that will carry over to the football field. And your, your ability and the way your coach is going to take care of what happens out here on this football field. But let's get it taken care of outside in the classroom, and it's going to carry over. Everything carries. When you're positive, everything positive about you will carry over. How do you explain uh, Teddy's ball security last year that he only had one fumble as a freshman? What accounts for that? What we do with ball security drills every day, and uh, Teddy's thrown in there just like the running backs. We have shoots that we run through, but it is just about protecting the football. We're not turning that ball over. When that ball hits the ground in practice, uh, you know, with the first two days, you guys didn't see it, but now that you're not out there, with those guys really hear it now when that ball hits the ground. They, that ball better not hit the ground. It's, it's, you don't want that to happen. Even if you're a running back, wide receiver, or whoever carrying that ball, do not let that ball hit the ground. What happens when it does? Oh, it's, it's not very fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mentioned, you mentioned you know, talking about the expectations. You've been through so many injuries. How do you try to keep it out that positive? Nord has, and I, I tell you a story about Nord. Nord came into my office probably a year ago. It was after the season. Yeah, it was Jan actually January. He comes in my office and he says, Coach, you know, I've been beat up, you know, and it's, it was. It's been one injury after another, and he said, I just can't do this anymore. And I said, Well, uh, Nord, you're not quitting, okay? So you might say, well, we're going to walk that one great big cow up here, who's our trainer, and we're going to talk about this. And I call your dad, I call your mom and dad, you're not going to quit, okay? So let's get that out of your head right now. I know you've been through injuries, but you're still an important part of this football team. And I need you in our program. So you're not going to quit. So we get the trainer up and we talk about just a plan. Because it has. He's been one injury after another. Now he's battled by it. And he's been, and one thing about him now, he, he battles and, and he's overcome so much. And he continues. Now uh, he's healthy, but uh, we just know this. With him and Hubble and Chris White, there's a good combination there for him. But he has, but I, I just like him just because, just his resiliency and how he continues to just overcome so much and the, the injuries. And because it's going to be a great addition, and he's going to do a lot for us. You said the four tight ends, is the fourth Austin Bowles, or is there nothing? Well, he's the fourth one right now because I saw that's just 
uh, who we have right now, but we do need it. Why, why to talk about the, just how important our tight ends are in our offense. Benavidez battled injuries too, and he lost, what, about 20 pounds, and he makes lighter. Was that, was that your plan too, to have him lighter, or was that his own plan to, no, he felt like just we were him sitting down with our trainer, Kyle, and our strength coach, uh, Coach Moore. He just felt like he needed to get just lighter because he's just carrying all that weight. And it was, it's been, he's been battling injuries also. But this has been the first camp he told me just the other day. He's like, it's the first time I've practiced the first day of camp, which is, which is amazing. But he's been in here for four years, going to a senior year. The picking game of concern right now is kind of yeah, it's a concern because you, you lose Phil Potts, so now you, you have Appleby, uh, you have Ryan Johnson, both of those guys, which are your punting, and then you have Wallace and Nakatani, but it, it is a, it's a major concern because none of those guys have been, they've never picked in a game, so now you haven't really been able to put the pressure on that we need to. And we, we rush them in practice and we try to put the pressure on, but not until they walk out here in the stadium where the pressure really be on them. There, you will just want to know how they're going to kick that ball. You open it to go through the upright when we try to field going. When we punt it, you just open it to get down the field. But it is a major concern. Home field is such a big part of football. How much of a premium is winning home field this year? What do you do to kind of develop? It's critical. In home field, I just think about the games that we have lost here and the ones that we lost at home. It's just. I mean, you look at that first year, we go in this fourth and a foot, and I go for it, we don't get it against South Florida, and we lose that one. And then the next week, we go lose to West Virginia. We get that fourth and one, who knows what's going to happen the next week. Then you bounce out here last year, you lose to FIU, then we lose to uh, Marshall, then we get beat by Pitt. But the games at home, you have to win, because it's so tough to win on the road. And, and uh, the home field advantage with the fans as a support. I mean, we pack it in here, and our fans come and watch us play. And you say, and I said, they're out there, they're here for a reason. So let's go give them a show. Let's not go out there and mess around and kind of flutter around. And all of a sudden, we look up and we're down there. We're going to lose the football game. But we, we have to do a better job of defending our home stadium. Do you do anything different? Do you look at your preparation at all or anything? We have, and, and, and it has been a key. Just what we try to do, we're going to try to change up some things and see if we can't just get it moving in the right direction. I just hope that we get home, that it's so critical that you, you get it home. And I tell them, I said, I don't understand how we go on the road and we play so well. Then we get home and it's like, we're, we're just sleepwalking out here. Did you, uh, your first year, you were sort of on that man wagon trying to get the fans in before the game started. Did you give that up to other people and not stop fighting that fight? Or? <laughs> no, our fans, they're, they're getting here. It's just, we got to play better. But no, it's... Uh, I think our fans are getting in the stadium, and, and they have done a good job of getting in the stadium. You look at what our season tickets we sold this season, and going to buy those Kentucky tickets. But uh, the, the excitement is here now. We, we have to go get the fans excited about the way we play. Coach, to go back to the tight end situation for a second. Um, we understand that Zeke Pike is enrolled in Newell now and will play tight end. What led to you guys wanting to make that or take a chance on him after he was asked to leave Auburn? Well, I, I don't know so much of what happened in Auburn, but I, I believe in this. If a young man want to be a part of our program, and, and let me say this, when you come into this program, when I sit down with you, I'm going to tell you the way this program is ran. So he's accepting, he's willing, and his parents have sat down with his parents. And we talked about just how this program, what, what our focus is and what we're trying to accomplish. And just, it's all about changing lives. You, you win, you win on the football field, you win the game, but you win by changing lives. And, and, and Zeke Pikes, uh, he, he will be a part of this program now. As far as putting him at a position yet, we have not said exactly what position he's going to play, but he will be a part of this program. Okay. Go, Charlie. Okay. All right. Thank you.